to introduce the topic, too often LGBT athletes make the decision of, am I gonna be out of the closet or am I gonna play sports? Too often they, they don't see that they can do both. Um, and what it leads to, it, it leads to a lot of problems for them. I, I can speak from my own experience that growing up, I use sports and other activities as a way to simultaneously be visible, but also to hide. So I would be seen, I, I worried that if I wasn't doing anything, people would start asking me questions. And so I did as many things as I like Boy Scouts and church stuff and every sport known to man so that people wouldn't wonder what was wrong or ask me questions and also so I couldn't get too close to anybody so they would start asking me questions. So it's a really horrible place to be in when you're an athlete in the closet. Um, you're never a complete person, no one ever really knows who you are and you don't ever know who any of your friends are because you don't want to ask them questions because they'll start asking you questions. Um, the good news is that things are changing, um, particularly at the high school and collegiate level. If you read out sports or follow this topic at all, there's a handful of high school athletes that are now coming out, they're starting blogs, others are finding these blogs and uh, relating to it and starting their own blogs. There's this huge network of out high school athletes now. It's also in the collegiate level, there's out collegiate athletes at schools across the country. Um, there's even, last year was a very monumentous occasion is that Kai Lums became the first openly transgender athlete in NCAA athletics. And that was a, a major story. Um, but in the pros, there's been incredible stories in the pros as well. Just a year ago, Rick Welts, who was president of the Phoenix Suns, came out of the closet, quit his job to go pursue a life with his partner in San Francisco. And a lot of people thought, well, his career's done. But within a month or two, the Golden State Warriors had hired him to be the general manager. So there's a, a strong indication that at, at the executive level, they're not considering sexual orientation when evaluating their candidates for executive positions. There's hundreds of allies in sport now. Um, we see it from Grant Hill and Jared Dudley fil uh, filming the Think Before You Speak campaign, the Don't Say Gay ad that was airing during the NBA playoffs and beyond. And there's athletes that are supporting marriage equality. Um, on the, the image here you see, Michael Strahan filmed the video. Scott Fujita with the Cleveland Browns has filmed the video. There's a ton of athlete allies in sports now. I think what might be the strongest indicator of how far we've come is the story of Tim Hardaway. So after John Amici came out in 2007, uh, Tim Hardaway said, you know, I hate gay people, so I let it be known. I don't like gay people, and I don't like to be around gay people. I am homophobic. I don't like it. It shouldn't be in the world or in the United States. So that was five years ago. Last year, uh, Tim Hardaway was advocating to support three city officials who were facing, uh, what they did, they were faced, being faced a, a recall election against them, and he was standing up for them because they had restored domestic partner benefits to employees of the city. And he was now defending kind of equal rights for uh, gay employees. So that's kind of very indicative of how far we've come in just one person. Um, and as society has kind of changed and started to embrace the LGBT community, um, the sports world is slowly following, updating their policies things of the sort. In the past year, the NCAA updated and added a policy to allow transgender athletes to participate in collegiate athletics, both male to female and female to male. Um, also in the past year, while three of the leagues were involved in collective bargaining uh, negotiations, three of them, the NFL, NBA, and Major League Baseball, all had a sexual orientation to the, the classes of athletes protected from discrimination. Uh, but then again, even with these approvals, there's still a lot of work to do. Um, it's been five years since John Amici came out, ten years since Asera Tawalo came out in the NFL. Billy Bean is the only one that's played professional baseball to come out, and that was in 1999. No one from the NHL has come out. Uh, and there's still numerous incidents of uh, homophobic language used in sport. Um, in the past year, there's Yoko Noah and Kobe Bryant you know, yelling out slurs and calling camera. I think Wayne Simmons in the NHL and just a couple weeks ago, Colin Clark in the MLS. And these are only these slurs that are caught on camera, uh, on a telecast, and you, you have to remember, I mean, all the other ones issued, thrown around in practice, that aren't caught on camera, et cetera. So it's kind of like, there's a lot of work to do. Another one, just this past week, Roddy White um, from the Atlanta Falcons, he tweeted, after, a fan asked him whether he would rather win the Super Bowl or lead the league in stats. And so, you know, the thought is you all, you know, winning the Super Bowl is the biggest thing to do. His reply was, would you rather be gay or straight? Come on, you know that answer. Um, so there's, you know, every week there's something homophobic done by a, a professional athlete. So 
Uh, with that as a backdrop, I kind of wanted to, I wanted to introduce our speakers and so we can start the discussion for the event. Um, at your right is Professor Erin Zubis. She's a professor at the Western New England University School of Law. She researches and writes about gender and discrimination in sport, including such topics as the interrelation of law and sports culture, intersecting, intersecting sexual orientation and race discrimination in women's athletics, retaliation against coaches in collegiate women's sports, the role of interest surveys in Title IX compliance, participation policies for transgender and intersex athletes, and Title IX and competitive cheer. Um, additionally, she is co-founder and contributor to the Title IX blog, which is celebrating its 40th anniversary, not the blog, but Title IX, its 40th anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> it's an interdisciplinary resource for news, legal developments, commentary, and scholarship about Title IX's application for athletics and education. Um, in addition to all of this, the seminar on sport law and culture. She also teaches administrative law, employment discrimination, and property. Prior to joining Western New England uh, faculty in 2006, she clerked for Judge Thomas Ambrose of the Third Circuit and practiced law at Goodwin Proctor in Boston. She also spent time as a visiting professor at the University of Iowa College of Law. Um, at your left is Brian Kitts. He is a co-founder of the You Can Play Project, which is an international effort to promote respect for LGBT athletes, athletes in sport. Brian spent more than 10 years in the front offices of professional sports teams in the NHL, uh, NBA, MLS, and the National Lacrosse League. Currently, he is the Marketing and Communications Director for the Mayor's Office of Arts and Venues in Denver, and he teaches sports and entertainment marketing at the University of Denver. A little more about You Can Play. Um, it's an organization dedicating to ensuring equality, respect, and safety for all athletes without regard to sexual orientation. The organization works to guarantee that athletes are given a fair opportunity uh, to compete, judged by other fans and uh, other athletes and fans alike, only by what they contribute to the sport and their team's success. Uh, I also wanted to kind of show the, the very first you can play video. Uh, it's called the Face Off. Um, it was featuring, I think, eight NHL athletes, including uh, the Blue Jackets captain Rick Nash. And this was kind of this was launched just over a month ago. Um, it's wildly well received by uh, players in the NHL and. I know some universities are now getting on board. I think UCLA, the hockey team is willing to participate, and Miami University in Ohio. So I'm going to show you that uh, the first video. If you can skate, you can skate. If you can shoot, you can shoot. If you can score, you can score. I'm Brian Burke, general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I'm Patrick Ware, scout for the Philadelphia Flyers. Before my brother Brennan passed away in 2010, he was the first person to fight for the rights of gay athletes in professional hockey. Since his accident, our family has fought hard to carry on his legacy and ensure that LGBT athletes around the world are afforded equal opportunity, judged only by their talent, character, and work ethic in their sport. We're now joined by hockey players from around the world supporting my son Brennan's simple message. If you can play, you can play. If you can play, you can play. If you can play, you can play. So, as I said, the organization has been so well received. Um, and with that, I'd like to turn to our panelists because they have much more expertise on the subject than me, and I can let them start answering some questions. 